Hi everyone and thank you for watching. In this video, I want to talk about the age of Aquarius and I want to differentiate the difference between the, the age of Pisces and the age of Aquarius. We just left the age of Pisces and we're now in the age of Aquarius. So I want to explain what the age of a Pisces was all about and also what the age of Aquarius is all about so that we understand the best way to move through this transition. And I'm also gonna talk about what exactly are the ages and what they mean to us and what they have meant for the world that we live in. And talk about more things as well. But uh, let's start with an age. What is an age? An age is basically where the axis of the earth is pointing in among the zodiac signs. Now the axis of the earth, the earth rotates on its axis, but the axis makes little circles like this. So it, well, I'm exaggerating now, but it makes little circles like this. And as it makes the circles, it points at a different zodiac sign. And it goes through one zodiac sign over a span of approximately 2000 years. That's an age. So. We just left the age of Pisces, and I'll explain why I think we have left the age of Pisces in a moment. So let's talk about the age of Pisces. What was the age of Pisces? <clears throat> what was it all about? Now, the age of Pisces, 2,000 years ago, what happened 2,000 years ago? That was the beginning of Christianity, uh, Christ, Christ's incarnation, and he lived for 33 years and it was the very beginning of that age and his influence the influence of that story carried on all the way up until now and the peak influence of that story was around 1000 years ago that's when the energy of that story was really big and had a huge influence on the world and was kind of dictating or influencing what was going on in the world you know, a thousand years ago, what was most relevant at that at those times was Christi the, the church, the church uh, according to history. I'm going off of the history that I learned. You know, history is it's kind of subjective, and you you never know what's what's exactly right or pure. But based on what I've learned, you know, the church was a really big important entity one thousand years ago. And that was the peak of the Piscean era. So the Pisces is associated with Christianity, but it's also associated with uh, characteristics like, or uh, virtues like um, turning the other cheek or forgiving or letting, letting go of the past. Also with the age of Pisces, there, there wasn't just Christianity. There wasn't. There was lots of other religions and and spiritualities going on. So it wasn't just purely a Christian age. There was lots of uh, religions that were doing their thing, and it wasn't any less important than Christianity. But Christianity was kind of the in the in the, the it was the forefront, the leader of the, the whole movements of um, religions and spiritualities. But also on the other end of the spectrum, because you have to keep in mind, Pisces is the fish. It's two fish swimming in two different directions. So you have you have like one one side of something and another side of something, and, and on two extremes. So you also it was also Christianity is also a sign of mysticism and hidden knowledge, and there were mystery schools and um, mystery groups um, throughout the age of Pisces that had to stay mystery for a reason. They probably had their own personal or selfish reasons for staying mysterious or hidden, but a lot of it was because of the of safety and worried, worrying about going against the grain of what society and the world believed and wanted the status quo to be in terms of how they wanted to, everyone to view spirituality and 
Pisces is also about being like a zealot, like living and defending your truth in an extreme way or intolerant way towards other people's truth. So that type of thing could happen too. And a lot of uh, a lot of uh, mystery mystery groups they have to remain anonymous for that reason. Now, just because they were by hidden or behind the scenes does not make them weak, weaker than any other religion or Christianity, any any religion that's deemed as the, the biggest one or whatever. It's just that they were secret. They had to be secret. They're probably secret and extremely powerful. And what you what you're gonna notice now, you know, we're in the age of Aquarius, is that a lot of those hidden things that were during the age of Pisces are gonna come to the the forefront and we're going to see them for they, were, they had to be hidden and now we're going to see them and a lot of things are, are in plain view right now that, that have been hidden for example you know me even talking about astrology astrology is very old but it's it hasn't been taken seriously and it's put behind other uh, belief systems and I consider it not even a belief system or a spirituality, but more education. Because if you track things and follow things, things are exact and you and predictable if you look at it like that. So it's, to me, it's it's an actual subject, and I you, you know, but Pisces, the age of Pisces, also care it carried over to every area of life, even academics. And you know, let's, t let's talk about science for a minute, uh, physics. Now, who was a fam famous scientist or that during the age of Pisces that was really important, really important mind that set the stage for science of today, the physics of today? Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton, he, he, was, he existed during the age of Pisces. And during his time here, his incarnation here, he brought tremendous knowledge to the scientific world, the academic world. And what he basically did, he took reality and broke it down to equations and he made it he just static, uh, cause and effect, and just everything to just like, a, looked at it in like a mechanical way. So he made the world devoid of uh, our uh, interpretation of it, the way we see things, the way we think, um, the spirituality of it, and even the energy. He didn't even really talk about the energy of it, of things that much. And he attributed those other types of things to spirituality. He left that to the church. And it was probably intentionally done by him because you know the guy was brilliant. So he probably intentionally did it because maybe the church didn't want him to do it. They didn't allow him to do it because he would be stepping on the toes of some very powerful people. And by the time that Newton was incarnated, existing, the, the church was very tainted. The church was on, it was in its, on its downfall. Um, there was lots of corruption in the church. You know, we're talking like 500 years ago or so. I'm probably off on my numbers. But during that time, the Pisces energy was past its peak. So a lot of people and entities and governments were using it not as, spirituality but as a mechanism for control and it was no longer pure anymore so there's probably like a bunch of uh, politics and things involved in the way Newton put the information out and, and what influenced him to put the information out. I don't see how someone that smart could just skip over a lot of the things that he skipped over so I think it was intentional for his own safety maybe and uh, also, yeah, during that time, uh, so I view I view like these ages and these uh, energetic influences. You, you know, like I just talked about spirituality a little bit, but it pervades these energies pervade the our entire reality, and spirituality is a big part of that. So I'm I'm speaking about it um, through that channel just to to send to 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 present my thought to you. But it's not. I'm not focusing on that. Now, the eight uh, 
for me, in my mind, spirituality is is all about or your your belief systems. It's all about the energy that we're getting and how we interpret the energy that we're getting. And you know, of course, we create stories and we create uh, ways to remember what the lessons that we learn from the energy that we're getting. But ultimately, it's all just energy, and we can get some brand new energy. Uh, coming into our reality and it changes everything that we think that we believe and our whole perception and mindset and everything will be completely different and what I'm saying is that I think it's kind of misleading or not accurate to to just accept your point of view and just as like uh, just an absolute truth because you know it's, it's, it's all energy so like um like having a belief system and standing steadfast to your belief system it could all change by energy just coming through and affecting your perception and everyone else's perception therefore our whole reality so i talked about the the age of pisces to talk about the age of aquarius and, you know, to give you some some contrast to show you what I'm talking about here. Now, in the age of, in the age of Aquarius, my prediction is that a lot of the secret societies and the mystery schools and uh, all of these types of people are going to come out, and they're going to be presented to the world. And a lot of uh, obscure information is going to be found out to be very true and very real and very useful. All the occult stuff, like um, ener energy healing, I think energy uh, energy healing based on your emotions, your energy, your your feelings are gonna. Uh, all these secrets are gonna start coming out, and um, and and they're gonna be put into academic books in the future because Aquarius stuff. Aquarius Aquarius is about energy, and it's also about everyone um, having a voice. So. There won't be there will be less restrictions on who can speak up about certain things because you, you see now today everyone a lot of people are having voices. Everyone is able to find their own tribes thanks to advancements in technology. Technology is another Aquarian thing. For example, the internet. The internet and Aquarius is all about interconnectedness. Now the internet is it connected the whole world, the whole earth to one another. Something that um that a hundred years two hundred years ago it, it probably it would take you months to to get a message to somebody now you can get a message instantaneously and this is an Aquarian thing internet is definitely an Aquarian thing that's that's it's a clear sign that we are in the age of Aquarius and we were probably in the age of Aquarius a hundred years ago early nineteen hundreds. Uh, late 1800s because that's when the technology boom happened and technology has just has fast forwarded since then so that was probably the cusp of the Aquarian age uh, around early 1900s it was either the cusp or we were already in it at that point but uh, the one of the, the people that initiated like the whole energy revolution uh, was Einstein Einstein Einstein, he he made the, for example, he made the equation uh, E equals MC squared. And it's all about, it, it basically means that mass is energy, energy is mass. Energy equals mass times light or mass times energy. This basically means that energy is mass. They're one in the same thing. And if you, if you, you know, th think back to what I was just talking about, uh, Isaac Newton, Isaac Newton, he, 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 separated those two things he, he just said there's a mechanical universe and it's cause and effect and everything's predictable but now Einstein's saying that all the energy and all of that's all together and if you want to you can also call energy other things you can call energy God you can call energy uh, uh, reality you can call energy a lot of other things but Einstein combined those two concepts, and um, we're gonna—I'm gonna explain how it even goes, even it gets even more um, odd, weird, strange, or hard to explain. And but yet, it's 
the reality that we're, we're sitting in right now. So uh, around the time of Einstein, there was uh, Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr was a scientist that he, he specialized and studied the subatomic particle world. And with subatomic particles, he, he realized that there were, there were some things that couldn't be explained that uh, so Einstein was still at the level of just trying to make everything mathematical, just like Isaac, Sir Isaac Newton did. And he was still sticking to that whole paradigm. But Niels Bohr, he realized that when you go to the, the subatomic world, um, everything changes. It's a whole different reality. It starts looking like magic. And it's basically nothing in that world. It's a bunch of nothing, nothingness in that world. And you start when you start talking about sub subatomic particles, uh, in that world, Niels Bohr um, introduced the idea, and you know, this is like the beginning of quantum physics. He introduced the idea that that uh, that a particle a particle in the subatomic world that was together at one point, if you separate them, and there's one here and one way somewhere, way somewhere else, whatever happens to this one happens to the other one, no matter how far apart, and it has the same effect on each other and, and vice versa. And Einstein didn't accept this because it went, it went against what he had laid down and worked so hard for. And again, my opinion is that you know, none of nobody's nobody's wrong. These great mind, these great minded people who, they, you know, you know, Newton had these these great ideas, and it was the foundation of what we what we know today. If we didn't have him, we wouldn't have a lot of what we have today. Um, none of it is wrong. We're we're in these ages, and it's new energy, and there's there's new points of views on everything. So nothing is wrong. Just it's just different energy. We're we're walking around existing. And experiencing this different energy and therefore we have different perceptions on everything so nothing is wrong it's just whole different energy and I'll go back and repeat about what I was saying about the you know, whole spirituality thing um, if, we, if we fast forward into the future and we're in some whole different energy a different age uh, our whole perception is going to be different and the whole our whole view on what the world is and and religion, spirituality, and existence, it's going to be totally unrecognizable in the very far, far future. So, uh, after Niels Bohr, and we got deep into learning about quantum physics. Uh, with uh, quantum physics, it, it even, like, it even got more, and it even got more strange, because what they learned later was that they were saying that what you see doesn't exist when you're not looking at it. So they're saying that it, it, it looks like they're implying that you're creating your surroundings, your situation in the world. And um, they did a lot of experiments to see if this was true or not. And all, it, it, a lot of the experiments confirm or support what, what they believed in re regarding this. So some very interesting stuff, and it gets more and more strange as we get more advanced and learn more about everything. And uh, right now, they're they're at the point of of running tests to see if the entanglement theory is true about uh, two two sub subatomic particles that were once one and the same, um, and you split them far away, you, you separate them far away from one another, and they have this they experience the same things if you do one do something to one or do something to the other they both experience the same thing they're running experiments with uh photons or or, or light some very uh simple very small particles like that to try to see if it's true and they're trying to confirm what they believe and um if they if they confirm that it's true which they some they think is confirmed then this would prove that einstein was was wrong or his his science is outdated but it's yet to be confirmed even though some people believe that it's confirmed but definitely the technology the, the the use of this science is being used in technology which kind of i think backs my point up also by by saying you know i just said earlier that you know nobody's wrong 
Newton wasn't wrong. Einstein wasn't wrong. Niels Bohr wasn't wrong. And uh, I, I don't know who pioneered um, quantum physics, but it, they're not wrong either. Everyone's running their experiments and they're coming to their conclusions and they're just telling what they're what they're seeing. So how can they be wrong? You know, so you know, look at it like that. So uh, what else is different about this Aquarian age that lets us know that we're definitely in the Aquarian age? Uh, you know, we just talked about the Internet, the inter interconnectedness of the world, um, social, socially. You know, it's about everyone's voice being heard. Now everyone can, it, like through use of, of, of uh, channels and tools like the internet, um, everyone can find their own tribe. Like no matter how alone or different you think you are, you can find a bunch of people just like you and form a tribe and come together and unify. And, you know, it, it carries over to a whole bunch of other different uh areas in reality for example a good example is the the whole gender uh situation that's going on today um people are really opening their minds to that that type of thing and you know just 30 years ago that would be very difficult to do society a lot of societies would it would be very difficult for that to uh to, to do that and this is also an Aquarian thing and um you know there's Everything can be taken to, you know, this is good, but everything can be taken in a negative way. For example, everyone developing a bunch of groups that are just separate from one another when ultimately we have to be together. And they say another Aquarian uh, topic or theme is the law of one. There's no separation, which if you have a bunch of groups, it's separation. But ultimately, we have to come together with our separation and, you know, I think the purpose of us living here is to work together and do things together and discover who we are together because I myself and everyone else has to discover who we are and even our purpose in life through other people. And they're doing the same thing to us, vice, vice versa. So, you know, that's, you, you know... It, that, and this is the reason why I'm making this video, to help people un navigate their life and understand how to navigate their life and find some answers and find some order in their reality. Because life depends on what type of energy you're, you're in. If we, if we get brand new energy moving through reality here, then... It can, it'll change everything. Everything will be totally different. It's all about that energy. Uh, belief systems will change. Energy systems will change. Science will change. Everything will change. And to like bicker or, or argue about things and thinking that everything's just static and concrete or just purely what you believe it to be is, it, I think it's very limiting to do so. So, that's my video. <laughs> I want to talk about this Aquarian age and how we know that we're definitely in the Aquarian age. And I think in order to help you navigate uh, this this new age, this uh, this energy, just like there's a bunch of other energies, it's more it's not just the this, the Aquarian energy of, of the ages. You know, you got a bunch of different other energies, um, um, other planetary influences. Um, you have your own free will. There's a lot of things going on that you know people that are yet to acknowledge or yet to even know so uh, a good a good uh point to keep going from this video or a good companion is to learn about what is aquarius all about what is the aquarian energy all about you know maybe even you know read us read an entire book on aquarian energy or the aquarian influence and see how it affected people in the past and what happened in the past and It'll probably be more and more difficult to do when you talk about ages because ages are to every 2,000 years. So uh, the further you go in, in time and history, uh, the, age, the information gets murky and difficult to believe, follow, and trust. So, you know, but still you can get, you can look into many influences. For example, uh, like we just had a, a, a great uh, conjunction of um, 
think it was like two years ago, two, 20, 2020, I think, I'm probably off, 2020, 2021, there was a, a conjunction of, uh, of, of Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius, and that was, that was some, some big energy, and that was like, it has like a 20-year influence. It's, it's not like an age is 2,000 years, that's 20 years, but by looking into that and kind of studying that, you can understand, like, what, or make a prediction or have, see what to expect about, you know, how ages work and how energetic influences work. And uh, I'm using a, astrology, of course, to speak about this. But I think there's a whole lot more going on, a whole lot more involved. And like I said earlier, it's all about interpretations and uh, nothing static. Everything can change at, at I think at the drop of a dime and um, I think we have to be ready for all these changes that can be and not just get too stuck in our ways and be very be very open to tomorrow being completely absolutely completely different from today and be ready to tackle that and have fun with it and em em embrace and take up on the challenge with determination so that's my video and um, how about how about I I put up uh, this this picture right here of the different ages? You see the ages like every two thousand years on back into the past. I only talked about the the, the Piscean age and the Aquarian age, but um, you, you see there's you know different ages, and each age represented certain types of uh, themes in history. Like for example, prior to the Piscean age, there was the age of Aries, and during that time, there was lots of primitive stuff going on, like um, it was very like war and and people conquering, and it was lots of masculine energy during that time. And the Piscean, the Piscean age came along after that, and kind of, and healed a lot of that, and taught about for forgiveness and sacrifice and that type of thing, and. You know, it all ties together once you start understanding the big, big picture of all of this. So I hope my video was at the very least entertaining or, or, or helpful. And uh, please like, share, subscribe, browse my channel and, um, you know, say what's up. Um, let me know what's on your mind in the comment section. I love you all. You take care of yourself. I'm about to get out and enjoy this, this beautiful day. Enjoy this beautiful day. Look how look how nice it is outside. I'm I'm inside right now. And y'all take care of yourself. <laughs> I love you. And I'm out. <laughs> Bye.